Hello Scorpio, welcome to your weekly reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of April 23rd through 29th. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Uh, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide, okay? Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you, and look at that. Our first card just kind of uh, was screaming to be heard, and this is the Eight of Wands. Some very good energy, very quick acting energy, right? Kind of explosive in a way. Uh, but let's lay out the rest of our Dove and Serpent spread. And as I do this, I want to also say that if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments down below this video. Okay. So the rest of our Dove and Serpent spread here, Path of the Serpent, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. This is going to be a very interesting week indeed. We're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. And this is the card we're going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the very end. And hopefully that will give us the confirmation, the validation, the uh, affirmation, maybe the simplification that we need at the end to tie all of this together. So stick around to see how that might turn out. Um, okay. We've got Major Arcana, Major Arcana, Major Arcana. We've got air. We've got air, fire. We've got air and fire. A lot of air, a lot of fire today. What we don't have is the water energy, okay? So with the absence of the water energy, I'm wondering if there is an emotional component to all of this that we're not addressing. Or on the other hand, if this is a situation where we don't need our emotion, we need objectivity, right? Maybe we don't need... Uh, the watery kind of feelings. We have the fire. Fire is passion. Fire is heat. Fire is ambition and enthusiasm. Maybe we don't need the water. Maybe we don't need the uh, sentimentality, right? Let's see what's going on. We start with the Eight of Wands. I feel like you're somebody who is very action-oriented, you know? Um, I feel like for you, it's better to it's better to shoot a hundred arrows in every direction than to not shoot any arrows at all because you're waiting to really like pinpoint your target, you know? I feel like for you it's almost we're just, we're gonna release all of the energy and hope that it hits something rather than just wait. Wait for the moment, wait for the target to appear something, right? So I have this really, really action oriented. Like I'm, I'm getting this vibe that maybe you, you're, um, maybe you're military, ex-military. Maybe you, you do some kind of um, search and rescue type stuff. Maybe, maybe fire department. Maybe law enforcement. Uh, if you are any of those things, thank you so much for your service. I mean that. Um, I was an EMT for a brief period a few years ago. Um, I really love it. I really love the, the medical. Uh, law enforcement, military. Um, it really is important work. I, I truly believe that. Anyway, um, you're this action-oriented person, right? And I think that you would rather would rather act and be wrong than to fail through non-action, right? Fail through hesitation or through waiting or through being timid or shy or, you know what I mean? So maybe it's good we don't have the water. The water would be that yielding, that sentimentality, that feeling like, well, maybe I should wait, right? But that's not to say that you don't have any kind of checks and balances, right? That's not to say that you're just impulsive and, uh, you know, you fly off the handle and you're just kind of wild and a loose cannon. No, you're not a loose cannon. We have this really good air energy here. Especially on the path of the serpent, we've got the justice or adjustment card, we've got the four of swords. You know, so you're a very discerning person. You have things are very well thought out for you, but you also don't hesitate. It's like you do all of your planning, um, 
maybe in retrospect, maybe after the fact, then you'll go back and you'll analyze, you'll debrief yourself, right? And you will figure out what worked, what didn't work, so that next time we've got the fire energy, bam, it, it works. And then again after, you'll debrief, you'll go through the air energy, and you'll see what's what, okay? So I think right now there is something that you are, there's something that you're just about to shoot all of these arrows out toward. You're trying to really hit something. It's like you, you're putting, um, you're putting all of your energy out there and you're hoping that you catch something, right? You're hoping that you hit your target. It may be that we aren't quite sure what our target is, okay? But we are putting all of our energy out there to manifest something to reach some sort of goal or some sort of target, right? We're trying to make an impact somewhere. But what I see in the midst of all of this fire energy now, if you look at the overhead camera, you see all of the fire energy here, right? The fire energy is at the front of your mind. It's what you're focused on. It's in your consciousness. But then from the unconscious, from the depths of you, from underneath the surface, creeping up into your conscious mind is this air energy, this thinking, this analyzing, this second guessing, right? And this is literally creeping up from your unconscious, from kind of out of nowhere, right? We've got all of this energy to act and the energy is forming a triangle. It's you're ready to go. You're ready to, to release all of your um, energy out toward Whatever this target may be, you're going to, you know, you'll find it. But then we have this air energy that's kind of, um, the air is active too. So the air is moving upwards, but now there's this kind of interference. It's kind of causing us to maybe second guess our trajectory, our coordinates, or you know what I mean? And that's what I'm getting with the seven of swords here. This is a little bit of kind of interfering thoughts, interfering data. Um, it's like someone's whispering in our ear, are you sure that's the right number? You know, are you sure that's where you want to go? Are you sure that's who you want to call? Um, and these are coming from the unconscious. Now, I, I was saying before how usually you do this kind of work afterwards. But something is leading you to do this kind of reassessment or this second guessing right now, like right when you're about to, um, you know, pick up the phone or you're right about to, you know, get the car moving or send out the emails or whatever it is. And again, I feel like you're, you're sending out a lot of different, uh, messages or letters or, uh, you know, could be resumes going in every direction. It could be that you're trying to get your work published or you're trying to, um, you know, begin a, a business or you're trying to get investors or you're trying to just generate some interest in something. It could be some kind of a marketing thing, but you're just, you're ready to send it out in every direction. But then something says, did you spell check that? So you're hesitating now. There's some delay. There's some second guessing going on. Okay. Now, I don't think it's taking you away from your purpose. I think that it might just be something that says in this case, at least, hey, before you hit that button, let's look at everything again, okay? I don't know yet if this is just some doubt, right? If this is just a little bit of um, your confidence kind of waning a little bit, um, if this is just something unconscious that um, is just a little scared of, of hitting that button and, and um, sending all of this information out, or if there really is something that we need to look at to make sure, you know, make sure the spelling is, is accurate, you know. But we'll see. We're going to go through these cards and see if we can figure out what might be happening or um, how you can deal with some of this, this, uh, this doubt that's kind of creeping up. Well, in the recent past, we have a Prince of Wands. This, the Prince of Wands is the heir of the fire, okay? So we have the air back into the fire. Now what this card is talking about is the pattern, the cycle that I just talked about. We act and then we debrief. 
so that the next time we act, we're going to have this new data, this new information to help us uh, be more effective, right? And that's exactly what the Prince does, takes the air, takes all of the debriefing, all of the data, all of the analysis that's done after the fact, and is, is using that in this new fire cycle, right? So I feel like this is a representative of your general kind of method, acting, then debriefing, analyzing the data to use that data for the next action. Okay. So this, I think, is this is how you how you operate, right? And I think this is this works for you generally. This is a very effective way. I feel it seems seems like it works. Seems like it's a very uh, very balanced, very organized kind of uh, pattern and cycle that you're on with this. Now, up above everything, we do have a seven of wands. So I wonder if what you're working on now, or whatever this action is that you're about to take, or these several arrows that you're sending in all directions, I wonder if this maybe has some larger implications than, than most things, right? If this is just something that is really just so major, so important, so big, and... Um, has so much at stake that your unconscious, your subconscious, this kind of whisper in the wind is saying, wait a minute, don't just let's, let's check the spelling, right? <clears throat> let's get somebody else to come maybe and read this to make sure it's good. Uh, so it's, it could be that it's just such an overwhelmingly important prospect. Whatever this goal is that you're pursuing, whatever this energy, whatever this work, this information that you are you're just about ready to hit send, okay? I think maybe we could pause and, and take another look at it. I think it's something that is going to affect the rest of your life. It's something that is going to um, have very severe consequences, very serious implications to it. This seven, seven of wands, not, not playing around. This is maybe the biggest thing you've ever done in your life, okay? This could be your, your peak moment, really. So it's not going to hurt to then listen to our unconscious a little bit. And here's the queen of swords underneath everything. And this is a figure who has uh, removed the, the mask, right? Removed the, the kind of headgear, taken the helmet off and just saying, okay, I'm going to put my pride away for a second. I'm going to take my, my active, action-oriented, uh, gung-ho, ready-to-go kind of energy, I'm going to set it down for a second so I can look at things again, right? I'm not hesitating. I'm not being sentimental. I'm not yielding. I'm not uh, faltering. Um, I'm just going to do a once-over. I'm going to give it one last check, make sure everything is perfect, and then we're going to go, and then we're going to do it. So this is a card that uh, has put has taken off the mask, taken off the helmet, right? Taken off the gear, um, and is ready to be honest about things, ready to take an unbiased, objective, clear-headed, clear soul, clear heart look at things. This is someone who is not clouded by this, this passion, right? Because we're not talking about emotion. All this fire energy is passion. We're like chomping at the bit to do this. And that's when we might act a little hasty or impulsively and a mistake will slip through. It's not likely with you because of this kind of military strategy that I'm feeling for you, the debriefing, the data collection and analysis, and then the incorporating that data into the, the next action plan. But this card is saying, let's just double check. Let's make sure that no mistakes slip through. You know? And this has put the pride down. This says, let's, let's put our gear down, let's be objective, let's, let's try to detach from this passion, this impulsive, this gung-ho, ready-to-go energy, so we can just look at things. Because there's a reason why your unconscious is sending you these little messages, these little whispers, and be like, you know, hey, did you check that one? Um, are you sure you want to hit that button? So we have to listen to those those impulses, at least in this situation, okay? And I think it's something different than just the usual, um, 
just the usual kind of mental chatter of like, oh man, I hope I did that right. No, this is something else. This is something that you, you can feel is a, almost like a distinct message. Okay. It's something that, uh, something that is unique enough that you've noticed it now as being, maybe I should listen to that. Maybe I should. Right. And I think if you're asking that question, then the answer is yes, you should. You should take the helmet off, put your gear down, give it a once over, double check things. Okay. Now in the immediate future, we have the emperor energy. This I think is the perfect progression of this scenario because the emperor is the one who can make those informed decisions, who really takes all of the info and the data and the analysis from the debriefing and now is fully informed and ready to execute. Right? Ready to put this plan into action because it has all the information it needs. It has double checked everything. Its advisors have double checked everything and it's ready to go. There's no question. There's no, there's no doubt because we've done the doubt. We've done the, the once over, the double checking, the twice over, I guess it would be. And now we're ready to execute with full confidence that there are no mistakes that are slipping through. If something doesn't work out, it's going to be through no fault of our own because we've sealed this thing up. We've sewn this thing up as perfectly as possible. So it's worth the extra, what, hour, day or two, another week to give it the double checking. Okay. Give it a little bit of a, of a quality check. Okay. And then execute. And now once we get that going, whatever this is, I'm very curious what you're working on too. I feel like it's almost like a creative thing. You're trying to send your work out maybe to, to many publishers or producers or something like that. You're trying to just kind of disseminate it and hope that you hit the right target to, you know, create the, the kind of, um, success that you're looking for. Right. Uh, I'm still obviously getting that, that military kind of vibe. Um, the path of the serpent. We start with this air energy. This is the knight of swords. Okay. Now we said that after the fire energy comes the air, there's the action. And then there's the debriefing, the data collection, the analysis, and then the reincorporating back into the fire, right? <clears throat> These two cards represent the cycle perfectly. Okay. You act through the fire energy. Okay. The fire energy goes into the air. This is the fire of the air goes into the air energy, the debriefing, the analysis, that air goes back into the fire, the prince of wands, the air of fire. These two cards are exact, like, you know, inversions of each other. Okay. So this represents the cycle of action, fire to air from air to fire, fire to air from air, and then over to fire. Okay. So I think that the, the cycle that you're on this pattern, this, um, this strategy that you have is wonderful. Excellent. I think it's very useful. And that's why I'm feeling like you have some sort of law enforcement or military, some kind of strategy, uh, training or experience or something, right? Because I feel like this is really the most effective way to operate any kind of, uh, any kind of system, you know, what we have next in the environment is this universe or world card. I kind of feel like this is something that is taking a long time, right? I feel like even after you send out all of these arrows, you basically are playing the waiting game after that. You know, I feel like, um, I feel like it takes a long time to get a response. It takes a long, long time to know if you've hit the target right? So it's kind of a, just, we're, we're just idling now. And this, I think is the time for you to use the air energy and to reassess and to, you know, to debrief and to strategize and gear up for what's coming next. Because I feel like one of those, one of those arrows will hit the target and you have to kind of, you have to already know how to respond to each one of these, one of these targets, one of these goals that you've reached, one of these, these people you know, producers, publishers, whatever they are. Um, 
for each one that you've sent out, you kind of have to know how you're going to handle it if they say yes or if they say no, right? So you have to have two separate plans or strategies for each of these targets. So that probably can, it could be a lot. It could be hundreds of uh, alternative scenarios for you. And that kind of goes in line with the universe or world card. There are, are infinite stars out here in the universe. Uh, everywhere in the universe is the center of the universe. And there are literally um, infinite uh, directions that you could go. Right? Infinite directions. We're not limited to just the eight or the four, right? The compass points or the in-between points of the compass. We're not just limited to a certain few roads horizontally. No, this is, this is a 360 uh, experience. There are infinite directions that we could go. Okay? And that's kind of what we have to plan for now, is what are the most likely ones and what are the alternatives for each of those. So it could be quite a lot. Um, but what else are we going to do in the interim while we're waiting? We might as well strategize and plan, right? Now, the next thing that we see is the four. And this is in position, uh, the position of your fears and worries and concerns. I think that this is the concern that maybe we are going to be too limited, right? I think you have this idea that, shit, maybe I didn't send out enough. Right? Maybe these few arrows that I sent out, these few kites that I let loose, uh, maybe that wasn't enough. Right? So this is you kind of second guessing your original strategy and thinking maybe I didn't do enough. Right? I think that you typically have that kind of vibe with yourself where you could be accomplishing a lot. You could be really putting in so much effort and energy and doing just excellently amazing work and effort but you're always going to feel like it's not enough. You're always going to feel like, man, I was lazy. I didn't do enough. Well, you've been out there, you know, digging a, a trench for, you know, 24 hours straight. Uh, there's no possible way that you could have done any more, right? But nevertheless, you will feel like you didn't do enough. You could have worked harder. You could have done more. Um, you know, why didn't you give it that, that extra push, you know? Um, and I think this is just how you kind of motivate yourself, right? But this card is also a card of rest, right? Um, and it's, it's, I think you're a little bit averse to resting, to the mental rest even, right? Um, I think through this strategy, through this planning for these infinite possibilities, I think we also need to take time to rest and recuperate and to unwind, right? And I think we need that brief period of relaxation, restoration, give yourself a mental, uh, you know, break, uh, some de-stress time. Because what's coming next is the ultimate success for you. This is the contract. This is the publishing agreement. This is the relationship that you were hoping to get through all of these kites that you sent out, right? The perfect one is going to come back and it's going to seal the deal, right? So I don't know. Again, I don't know if this is a professional thing, if this is just, um, I mean, it could be like, a, you know, your dating life. I don't know. Uh, but I feel like it's publishing or, or music or producing or something like that. It's something creative, I feel. Anyway, the right person is going to respond and it's going to seal the deal. So we have to be ready for that. And I think that you prepare by debriefing, right? Collecting the data, analyzing the data of what you've already done. Planning for what you're going to do, depending on what target, you know, what arrow finds its mark. And then resting, giving yourself a break so that you can be fresh, you know? And then it's, it's time to go. It's, you're ready for this, right? And this, I think, is going to be really great. This is what you've been wanting. This is what you've been working toward. Um, I've been working toward this mystery card. And I feel we've got so much air energy here. I almost feel like 
the air is kind of the central thing here. We had all this fire and this creativity, but once that has been expressed and sent out into the world, all we have left is our mind, right? All we have left is time to sit and think, to plan, to consider, to question, a lot of mental activity going on. Now that we've done the active work, now we just have mind. Now we're just here with our minds, right? But thankfully, I, I see the success that you're looking for at the end of the path of the serpent here. It's, it's coming. So if this is more air energy, I think this might be some air energy saying that, look, once we begin now with this contract, this deal, this agreement, this connection, whatever this is that you're trying to form with this person or entity, um, once that begins, I think maybe your strategy is going to have to change. It might not be preemptive action and then debriefing, right? You might have to think of a different strategy, a different way to do this, because I think this is going to be a new situation for you, right? You're, you're embarking on this new journey. We might have to reassess what our strategy is fundamentally. So maybe this is going to be a princess of swords about starting with a new strategy, something that we're not too confident with yet, but we're getting, we're getting there, right? We're turning some of this analysis back on ourselves to see, okay, now how do I adapt to this new situation to really maximize my effectiveness in these operations? I'm thinking Princess of Swords, yeah. Oh, and there it is. There's the Princess of Swords. Yeah, so I feel like once we reach this success, this agreement, this new level of things, um, you're going to have to learn how to adapt your strategy to that new environment, right? And reassess the flow of your operations, your data, your debriefing, your data collection, analysis, and see if there's a new strategy that you could test out that, you, that, might, that might resonate and harmonize a little bit more with the reality of that situation, whatever that is. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had a frog in my throat. Um, <clears throat> so this is really about, about adaptation, okay? And trying to adapt our strategy to this new reality that we've kind of won for ourselves, right? Um, so I feel like this is really, it, it's really a, a great success, a great projection for you. It's also more work that you're going to have to do, right? Um, there's, there's always going to be more to do, but this is what you wanted. This is, the, this is like the beginning of the work, right? You've done all of this preliminary work to get to this point. Now the real work begins. Uh, and now the extended reading begins. You can click on the link that's right here to have access to all of the extended readings for all signs. Uh, Scorpio, this was your weekly reading April 23rd through 29th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.